Okay, Jim, go. All right, I'm Jim, software engineer. I work for Samsung uh, Research America uh, nowadays in uh, Irvine, down in Orange County. Um, I've been a lifelong software engineer. Uh, and uh, this, um, uh, the PET 2001 was uh, the first microcomputer I used when I was in uh, fifth grade, four, uh, fifth grade and sixth grade. And uh, I bought this, uh, this um, off of eBay about almost 10 years ago. I think it's more than 10 now, but, and it was not working. And um, in like 20, around 2015, I started restoring it. And uh, you can see, um, these are the, I had to, uh, in general, it was it like I had problems with chips, with broken pins, and all sorts of problems. Uh -huh. ROMs were not working right, uh, and then the monitor went screwy. And there's a video of it going like this, you know, waves, Ooh. and the capacitors Ooh. went bad. So um, after some, uh, the mon this part was relatively easy, just to changing out uh, capacitors, uh, electrolytic capacitors in the uh, the video circuit board. Hmm. Um, the drive, the tape drive needed a new, uh, a, a new um, uh, belt, hmm. uh, but otherwise it worked. And then um, the RAM was missing. This, this was a cannibalized pet that another guy had two or three of them, and he huh. took the RAM. So I, I had RAM missing, and it, he put it up with like one or two K. <laughs> and so then I, I, I found a RAM on eBay. This, oh. like, it's mm. paid a, extremely way too much money for it, like 50, 60 dollars or 50 bucks for But you know, the guy gave me a, a handful of it and I eventually got ones that all worked to get up to this 8K. Um, then um, I was plagued by this problem where the computer would uh, run fine for 10 or 15 minutes and then, oh. and then hang. And I was like, this reminds me of the pets back in the day, and they did this bad behavior. And you had to push all the chips down. That was another thing after a while. But um, the hanging problem, I was in, this, in there with a, a probe, you know, testing, the, it, reading lines off of the 6502, all this sort of stuff. And be, somewhere between software and hardware. Finally, it, we, after a long blog of... Uh, the history of all the work I did and talking to people at the VC Fed, um, uh, VC, uh, the, the Vintage Computer Federation, which has uh, great resources for all computer types, Commodore, Apple, etc. And they helped me. And um, then I found uh, that you know I needed to replace a ROM, so I got a ROM replacement. You had to get a little con uh, kit or a little. Um, uh, it's a modern ROM, a modern ROM on a that was a deck with an adapter. Uh, but then the computer still had hanging problems after that, and then I went for a full RAM ROM replacement. I found that plugs in. And there's a picture of it there on the iPad, and that one um, uh, from uh, Tynemouth, uh, England. A guy makes made these. Hmm. And it allows you to, you, with dip switches, you can change the configuration between uh, basic one, the original, basic two, and basic four, and then the RAM from uh, everything from eight to up to 32K. Uh, and you could also switch off the, the replacement so it uses your original um, resident RAM and ROM. And uh, it plugs into the socket where the CPU goes, and the CPU goes in there. And so it's very, you can remove it at any time or restore the computer back to its original uh, state. So um, after I installed that, and then the video was fixed, and I did clean, I had to take apart the keyboard and use this, uh, uh, this iron kind of paint to uh, help restore its action, or its action, because you'd click and it wouldn't, uh -huh. it wouldn't register. So you have to take that whole thing apart. Um, and uh, here, I'll open her up so you can see. Uh, I went, yeah, so I did a lot of stuff, hooked up oscilloscopes, and so yeah, it became kind of a, you know, a little bit of a oh, yeah, like, like a hood. Project. Like a yeah, this, like a, this, <laughs> this opens up like a hood. It's very similar to a, an old car, you know? Yeah. It even smells like an old car. <laughs> Or an old computer. It doesn't have oil in it anyway. But that's a huge capacitor, like in uh, mm -hmm. AC unit. Yeah, this is the, the this is sort of the wow. to um, 
it's uh, they call it the rippling uh, smoothing capacitor, mm. I guess. Uh, yeah, the, that the, the video signal is awesome. Yeah. Oh, the it, it's awesome. The yeah. image quality is very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Although it's yeah, now it it's jumps something. It jumps because it's uh, it, there is some fluctuations. I may have another capacitor going at oh. dying at some point. You never know. Uh, okay, you, you got that. I'll lower it. Yeah, we. I love this old um, uh, this old power supply. This old transformer. It looks really scary. <laughs> I mean, that thing is like from the dark ages. You know where I seen one like that in. Uh, uh, in a, like a, a melting oven. They oh, really? <laughs> generate, generate a lot of extreme power. power oh. yeah. <laughs> so, um, a furnace. Uh, I'll want to also load up a, a game of sound. So, no, the most recent thing I've done, so those were the, done in 2015, most of that stuff. So, the recent stuff I did was to get um, amplified audio as wow. well as the joystick wow. and the disc. Uh, a, um, uh, a compact or a, a disc uh, emulator essentially that plugs into the disc port, the mm. IEEE port, and it uses a micro SD. And mm. uh, then you have access to uh, unlimited game, unlimited software, and you don't have to use this anymore. I started using this originally, <laughs> and that's why I put it away for three years because I'm like, I, I don't have the patience to record all these things on and then try to load them from it's just so for this event in fact it inspired me to get the joystick and the <laughs> amplified sound working and even the, also the micro SD so now it, it it has um it's it's a usable computer it can be even fun uh with very good in a rudimentary way so here I'll uh, ask you to hold on a sec while I load uh what would you like to see uh uh, I guess one of my favorites here is the uh, uh, Cosmic Ads, you know, uh, okay. which is a Galaxian program. Go ahead. I'll try to um, not be in the way here, but no problem. To to load this, uh, well, actually, this uh, the system can handle uh, multiple directories and subdirectories, uh, and you use this uh, hmm. this format or this syntax with a dot dot in it even to go back up a directory and it can also load d64 disk images mm. so this guy bitfixer.com he is the maker of this uh, device and i helped uh, he i bought one of them as a kit forty dollars and did some soldering to finish it off and then i helped debug a lot of problems with it because mm. uh, i was having you know, it, it had never been really fully tested. Is his um, uh, solution, SD solution, still available? Because uh, yeah, he, it's, it's, he, it's very irregular on when he posts what he has. Yeah, he's pretty regular. But this one, um, uh, this one called Pet Disk Max, is hmm. available now. Pet Disk Max. Yeah, huh. and uh, it's the second version of his. Uh, uh, pet disk solution hmm. that uses the uh, the, di the uh, micro SD. See, I did not know about that because he does not really d advertise it very well. No, he's he's got a web page. He's a, just a guy, you know, doing this in his spare time. And, right. Um, so what's interesting about Cosmiads is if you do a, a, a poke, uh, one poke, it will enable the uh, joystick. And that it's kind of mm. interesting. It, otherwise, it's keyboard only. So you do this poke. Uh, I know this is ancient type of stuff here, but bear with me. And then, um, yeah, it's amazing. These computers didn't come with sound right. or a joystick or anything, and you you made your own board to do those things. Um, and they had diagrams and in these early newsletters on how to do it. Mm. And uh, so here I'll show you, you can hear the full sound and get the full experience. Oh yes, that's nice. Of Petsky graphics. Is that, wow, Petsky, yes. Oh, Petsky, this is all character-based graphics. Yes. It looks very playable. Yeah, and it's, um, anybody can try whenever. And there's many, I mean, there aren't too many games that have, that use the joystick. 
Right. Uh, because there were multiple solutions to the joystick uh, problem, and um, only uh, only a, they they didn't decide on anything. Whereas the sound, everybody decided to use yeah. the CB2 like a single pin on the back of the user port, and so sound became um, pretty much co uh, consistent across. Uh, the, the software writers, the developers. Jim, so how is your joystick connected into the PET 2001? So that is uh, also on the board I created. Oh. Uh, you can, if you want to, you can come around okay. at some point and shoot a picture of it. Right. It, uh, so... So you built your own... So I had to build... A board? I built the board. Wow. It's not really that impressive. It's, uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, I do work on... Uh, I'm a maker. I like to... I work on rob I'm a robotics guy, Ooh. and um, I'm okay with the soldering iron. Uh. So, uh, uh, and I have an electronics store nearby, so I get the parts, um, and uh, you know, simple, uh, a simple DE9 uh, socket, nail socket, and, and the um, and a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, and then uh, just hook, just soldering in a single resistor. And, it's not that difficult to so, do this part. So, so the sound is coming off the same board that for the joystick? Yeah, I just... The, um, the, uh, I'll turn this down. So the, what happened was the user group decided to use oh. the user port and to do these things that the pet didn't come with. So this user port um, has a bunch of data lines and... Um, so one of them was this called CB2, and they decided we can use that for sound. So you can do an oscillator and uh, do sino sinusoidal output to that uh, to that line. And um, also they decided let's do the joystick there too. Hmm. Um, Very good. And uh, even you can even have two joysticks wow. if you. But no games use it, so it's oh. <laughs> um, it's really not well one or two games because of, of people that made the effort, but. Uh, most of the games, the commercial games, decided, okay, we're going to use this pin out. These, this pin means left, right, you know, up and down, that sort of thing. You, in fact, it's mainly just left and right, uh, but up and down as well. And so that, those are just other pins on the user port. So it's all just one card plugs in the user port, um, and that's homemade. And then, like I said, that other, the other port, um, the IEEE port. Uh, which is called usually it's called the printer port. Mm -hmm. um, that has the uh, the pet disc max, which mm. is actually a pretty sophisticated thing. It, it needs a five volt power supply, and it's got a um, uh, it's got a microprocessor on there, a microcontroller on there. Um, Interesting. Like STM32 related uh, one, and then it's got the the micro SD card, and so it boots up when you turn on the pet, and then. You watch the light until it stabilizes, uh, and until the light goes solid, and now you can use your your disc, basically. Um, it also has Wi-Fi, in fact. It, um, <laughs> so this machine can access the internet, which is kind of uh, mind-boggling. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so maybe some more work could be done, but right now, what I've tested, what I tested is you could host a web page on your um, on a computer in your LAN in your local network, and uh, the pet can load games off of the off of that <laughs> through the Wi-Fi through the pet uh, snacks through wow. the IEEE and <laughs> all the way in. And I had to I help I uh, help debug that the, too. The, the network That's stack fits in uh, 8K. No, the this again, this is all running on the. It's all oh, the, 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 the exter external thing runs all the. Yeah, that external thing you can all take a look at is an it LED. It over the IEEE. It's a, yeah, the only part that's that's uh, relevant to the pet is the communication port. That's it, which is relatively fast apparently. This IEEE, because like you said this will take this game would take two or two minutes to load by tape. It takes three seconds. Don't to load by IEEE, mm. wow. so, yeah. um, and this was my first sound uh, solution, which again was, I, I just got it from the user group information, or actually I got it from a more modern source on a, on a bulletin board, 
maybe VC fed. And this is a piezo, a piezo speaker, um, and it plugs in that same port. Uh, and, but, and it uh, it offers a very uh, uh, light sound quality, but it's good enough for one person in one room, and it doesn't require any power uh, because of the piezo. And it's got a different resistor in there, but it's kind of neat. You can make you can still find these parts. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I showed you this. This is these are the parts that came out of it and replaced. So and then the, the, here's some of the ROM. Actually, the ROM, one of the bad ROMs. Uh, and a replacement, or two of the ROMs actually. But uh, anyway, and yeah, so that's and here's these. Are, I have documentation uh, from the original owner, or maybe a, a second owner. I'm not sure. Original pet user notes from January, February, 1978, and some other ones. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I just photocopied out of there, like announcing the pet. You know, <laughs> really old. Uh, and this one, the original, um, like, ad for $795. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you full ASCII keyboard. Oh, yes. Very full. Uh, <laughs> nine <laughs> inch. Not, not ergonomic, though. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's more, it's a calculator keyboard, you know, from uh, Commodore made calculators. Uh, and they made business furniture, and so this is kind of like metal yep. business furniture with calculator keyboard. It's interesting, but uh, uh, and yes, 8K of RAM and all that. And then yeah, they, just this other stuff is um, just more documentation. The original schematic, Ooh, um, nice. which I studied a bit when nice. I was debugging problems. Very nice. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work is the, uh, for some reason, this is actually another piece of hardware. This is a second, you know, it's uh, external data set, as right. they call them. And um, this one works if you plug it in to uh, one of the, the front port inside the computer, but for some reason it doesn't work on the back port, which hmm. it's supposed to. And I check the power, and there's power and everything, but, um, but it's not really, you know, who needs that? <laughs> <laughs> And this is like a different way. I use this a lot when I was debugging or trying to figure out things. This is a much more simplified. This is a picture of the of the main board with all of the chips designated what they are. So if you need to replace them, you don't have to go try to read it on the chip. And so that came in handy. This documentation came in, yeah, kind of handy, uh, some of it. And this is like from some guy who was developing a, 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 a memory expansion, mm. one of the previous owners. Mm. Got all this information here about the memory chips. Um, and then uh, the other binder, this other one other big binder, this has got more of that stuff, more pet user notes. Oh, I haven't wow. read through, you know, this is just like incredible historical yes, it is. significant stuff. Still has the person's address there. I mean, uh, and then notes from his development of uh, signals. This guy must have been an uh, electrical engineer or I mean it's certainly a digital. And you've got other diagrams of of the video board the video monitor uh, circuitry. I mean I don't know if you have if this stuff exists for Commodore 64, does it in the public domain? <laughs> Yeah, you can get you can uh, get that schematics of the computers and the monitors and the disk drives. Oh, for for PEP 2001, it's very limited. Yeah. I mean, I had uh, Ray Carlson work on my PEP 2001, and he was <laughs> he was so so up in arms saying, "Robert, I can't find anything online," and he was having trouble. And he finally got the 2001 working. But I don't think it's fully, fully there. I mean, the, yeah. The, the, if any of this is of use, I will be happy to scan a lot. Yeah, this is the famous chip, the 6540, that yes. I paid so much, oh. too much money for those chips. Oh. But um, you know, that's to make it historically, uh, you know, accurate. Isn't right. It? Um, that's why I did that. But this has got notes, and it's many different. Diagrams uh, oh, of the circuitry. Amazing, um, amazing. Yeah, you know, in multiple copies of it as well. And yeah, just, I haven't even got, I mean, I flipped through this, but 
I uh, haven't gone really read every page. There's a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff is some, something called the Pet Shack, or uh, there's a company um, that, yeah, Pet Shack Software House. Like this letter says, you know, um, the Ram ROM chip, the ROM chips and the Ram chips used in your pet may not be the same as used in the author's pet. Commerce uh, uh -huh. using two different chips for the Ram. They're using 6550 or blah blah blah. This is from this president, Larry Schellenberger. Interesting. So he's obviously corresponding about the memory chips and how to expand the memory. And the, yeah, the, anyway, so that's. That's the documentation, and then these are just photocopies. But these are these are available online, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, these different um, manuals. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's probably some stuff in here that is a little harder to find, especially these original. These I'm sure are scanned in. These uh, uh, these original these uh, pet user group pet user notes. Not all of them. Maybe not all. And they had programs, of course. These were the type-ins. Um, anyway, any questions? I guess that's, that's it. For, uh, Jim, how long did it take you to get your machine? Well, did you start rebuilding your machine in 2015? And Yes, that's true. And so it took you to 2021 to get it to this state. Yeah, now it's, uh, if you look at the, you know, that blog, if you want to see my, the whole history of what I've done, it's on the VC Fed um, under the uh, Commodore, uh, you know, uh, Commodore sort of forum there, vcfed.org. Uh, I, I can send out the link. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, what would be I the topic? I to uh, uh, I, the, well, the topic was like my Pet 2001 restoration project. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we, we could look there. Yeah, I mean, I think I sent it to you before, but it's, uh, I, you know, I can send it to you, the group. Um, but yeah, it's uh, my Pet 2001 8. And it, it's a long, it's a lot of stuff with pictures of, from oscilloscopes and oh. photographs. And wow. <laughs> I bought an oscilloscope. <laughs> this, really, although I should get one anyway. Uh, but um, what was I going to say? The uh, yeah, so I I bought it I think in 2011 or 2010, and um, then I didn't really start doing much till 2015, and then came back and so at 2015 I got it up to the point where it worked basically. Um, but it, um, uh, that was just like the first restoration pass. Uh, but then it still was hanging. And, um, but I had purchased the Time Out Ram ROM board, which you saw here. Then 2018, I finally uh, assembled, uh, soldered together that board, and then got it in. And then I had the you know replacement RAM ROM. Then I could use Basic Two, Basic Four. Then I started playing with more advanced games. And then 2021, I did all the stuff I just said. So. What is your pet currently running now for Basic? The one, the the way we right see now, it. Right now, so I've been all day today. It's been in Basic Two. Okay. So it can do like I think that's the best compromise because if you go to, you know, Basic One can't even right. load files off of my IEEE. Because right. it was uh, not compatible. Um, basic two can run a bunch of stuff. Basic four can't run all of the older stuff. Oh. I think hmm. it's not backward compatible completely. But uh, but yeah, I can turn it off, switch a couple of dip switches, and then be in basic four, and then run you know some other program like uh, there's there's like a modern one uh, like this Pet Panic. Something called Pet Panic and oh yeah, I've heard of very that. new. Yeah, it's, it's very new. People are very writing new. like new code. Uh, there's one called Pet Portal, which hmm. um, really that's yeah, brand that. new. It's new, hmm. and it's after like the Portal video hmm. game series where you 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 kind of you jump through a you, you have to it's a puzzle type <laughs> game where you, you walk around, you step on a thing, and then it opens a door, and you oh. have to go through huh. that. And I, I actually want to play that because I really that was one of my favorite games on the Xbox. 360. Mm. The only problem with one of the biggest drawbacks of this pet to say something not so, or you know, one my, uh, negative point is the um, it's, it's these newer games will uh, fill the screen with snow. You know, it's this famous problem with the older pets, uh, the screen refresh issue, mm. and uh, so 
just the video circuitry and the whole system, it couldn't handle, uh, it, it couldn't handle the kind of, you know, the more advanced things we have today. So uh, the refresh will be, you know, the newer games, it will be uh, totally snowed out, you know, kind of snowed out. You can still play, but it's, it's snowy. And, uh, but there's a lot, uh, now I have, I've actually converted a few of these games to use the joystick. Oh, um, very nice. My joystick, anyway. They were already joystick capable, but mm -hmm. they weren't the right, uh, they, they were like the wrong kind of scrambled uh, directions. Mm. So I, and it's interesting, these pro, some of these programs, they had, a, in basic, they had a string at the beginning that said joystick, and it was um, the, uh, just some numbers in there. And those numbers were corresponding to the uh, the buttons that oh. would do the left, right, up, and down. Uh -huh. And so I just had to figure out what the mapping was for hey. this one after I, you know, I I soldered everything together. And then so then I just changed that string and it, and uh, fixed the joystick for these for uh, the, some of these games. So I'm trying to find more joystick Very plus good. sound games because I good. really only have a few, but. Questions, anybody? Questions? Is yes. Is that the original front panel sticker, or is that like a reproduction? Sticker? No, yeah, this is a reproduction, and um, I'm sorry to say that it's really not working too well, oh, but it's, uh, I'm going to get another one. The uh, the guy who sold me, I told him it's not working, and he <laughs> said, I'll send you another one when I get the new shipment. It's really shiny. It looks nice. Yeah, it's good, as long as it, uh, as long as I could get it to stay, but... You know, with the adhesive not working, it's kind of like, I don't, you know, he's, he owes me a new one. I <laughs> paid money for this. So, but uh, it came to me with no sticker, oh. no emblem at all, and I lived with that for until this year. Very I irritating. Finally, I'm sorry? Irritating not to have the yeah, sticker. Yeah, and I finally decided, you know, this, I, I want one, and, you know, and I got the, and I got it, and I'm like, yeah, that really, it makes the computer... It kind of right. finishes it off, really. You know, the blue. This is called the blue pet. They have mm -hmm. different names. A lot of them had black here right. with a black sticker. Mm -hmm. And this is the blue pet, which is the earliest. This is 1977. It says on the board, wow. it's the earliest model. Um, and I, you know, the serial number doesn't mean much because it's in the thousands. But, uh, but yeah, it it is a 77. So. Any other questions? questions? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.